All right, uh, I guess let's continue our journey. So how does this, how does this work? Oh, I see. Uh, so we're heading that direction, technically. We're gonna fly around for a bit, just in Are case we- Are we going to Golgothanian, or where was Deluge supposed to be? Oh, did you hit them? Yeah, apparently so. How dare you, you Nightwing scum! Blasted fools, you cannot intimidate the accusers. We shall face you soon enough in the forthcoming right, but first, we have another pack of fools whom we must vanquish shortly. Until then, stay out of our way. <laughs> That's the place we're not supposed to go. Oh, hey, there's Barker's gang. Barker. Oi! What the bloody blazes? Barker notices your wagon at his flank there and begins to laugh. Well, if it isn't the Nightwings, flaunting their fancy little flying wagon, aye? You think you're better than us mates, aye? Pah! You ain't better than the dung I stepped in last night! Now get out of here, I've got a mind to leap on over there and rip your gizzards out, you hear me? You're just, just gonna try bumping into everyone, aren't you? It's, it's amusing. Now I wanted to see if there are any exploration points. I think you might get exploration points in the region that you're going to be having your next right in. Yeah, I just wanted to look, because we might have also missed some stuff previously. Well, Doesn't that's where like the rights take place. Aha! Oh, the inverted fall of Solium soars into the sky. Roars. It's the Roars. waterfall. Roars. Yeah. Uh, okay. Somewhere beyond it lies the Commonwealth, beyond your vision, and beyond your grasp. Your home is there, somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Those who transcend the Shimmer Pool after a liberation rite, the fall shall send them on their way. A seldom seen celestial phenomenon linking the downside back to the Commonwealth. Thus, beneath a blooded moon, the Sclorian waters rise for but for a moment, only to fi fall again. Oh. Downside legend. I suppose that would be unfair if we could simply fly. Oh, that it would be unfair if we could simply fly. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got anything else, but I did find a thing. Yeah. I was right. Interesting enough, looks like everybody else has already started to, um... To conduct their rites? Yeah, to reach the place. I just wanted to fly around for a little while. I also just love looking at the, like, the artwork in the map. Mm-hmm. Also, the fluttering animation of, like, the wagon and how it's buzzing about. Admittedly, I'm not looking at that much, just because... Uh, I don't know, the environments are great. I would actually pay for a poster that is the whole map. <laughs> as, like, one thing. Oh, hey. Point of interest. Yonder lies the Ridge of Gold, somewhat less imposing than viewed from this vantage point. Do you not agree, reader? The myths of the downside hold that it is no mere ridge of stone, but the remains of Lord Gandroth. Once slain by Golgothinian himself. Oh, so that's what that creature is. So the Serpent Titan, vanquished by the scribe. <sighs> Yawn, man. No, Golgothinian. He brandished his tower shield and sent Gandroth's fury back into his countenance, the Book of Rites. Golgothinian, second of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Oath Taker or the Repentant. The Empire's Master General entered exile of his own volition to pursue his liege. Though perhaps such tales are of little import now that you stand to confront the Pyre Hearts there in just a short while. Alright, so it looks like we've got... Hollow Root, Blooming Pool. Well, we never went to Blooming Pool. Yeah, we never went to Blooming Pool. I just want to see. Okay, Faye wants to see Hollow Root. And Sir... something of value on this route. I want to go with this, probably. You want to see if there's more valuables? Yeah. Uh, because the other thing is, uh, we might need a lot of money for something. For the, for the debt. I don't even know. Okay. Oh, I actually have to press it on the keyboard. I was trying to one-hand everything. Page revealed. Downside Prairie. You make a successful landing in the Downside Prairie, near the southern edge of the Downside. Memories of having first met Hedwin, Jadariel, and Ruki come flooding back. You now should have some time in the vicinity before continuing onward towards the Ridge of Gold by land. Oh, the Beyonder Crystal seeks Fey. 
Downside Clinger. Yields fruit from time to time, though only if one says the magic word. Mm -hmm. Keepsake from the Downside Prairie. These are neat. I'll travel log for you. Oh, this is by Malith, yeah. the Wild Witch. The downside is connected to our realm via a single artery, the river named for our prestigious sap colleague, Luz Glorian. That river gushes into seeming nothingness. That seeming nothingness turns out, of course, to be the downside. Its existence undermines thousands of years of thought about the composition of our world. The downside southern edge we call the Sandfolds. It is a desecrated wasteland, speaking well to this land's lack of hospitality. Here, the strength of so many who survived the river journey finally fails. If only they could clamor further north, where lies the verdant downside prairie. A better place to perish, to be sure. Alright, there we go. Well, beyond her crystal. I sense my lovely reader has returned. Then, how may I assist you? Let's ask what's on her mind. I'm sleepy. Oh, you know my lovely reader. I must admit that I did not expect your little followers to be quite so receptive to instruction as thus far they have proved. I know not whether they owe it all to you, or have somewhat more to them than I first inclined to think. In any case, however, I am pleased that they are not entirely disgraceful. I like to keep my expectations well in check, seeing as I have been thus expelled until the end of time. So, it is pleasant when those expectations are exceeded, every now and then. Although, I cannot quite recall when that last was. Oh, when that last that was? It was sort of flipped around. But, the best part of all this are these brief times in which you visit me in my domain. I know you cannot for long. This damned crystal in which I am enthralled shall see to that. Though, as you have perhaps surmised, whenever it decides that one of your little friends is worthwhile enough, why, I can offer them a trial. And likewise, I can offer you a chat. Sometimes I think... As you achieve those trials of mine, perhaps it does something to trim the length of my eternal banishment. Eternity being what it is, however, perhaps not. Still, if the trophies of those blasted scribes are worth something to you, then all you need is but brave my trials, and they can be yours. And perhaps there's a good in it for me as well. <laughs> then something changes in her. And she changes the subject. I've likely said too much. I am not to influence you in your use of the Beyonder Crystal. It is not there to be tampered with by anyone, including me. Uh, forget what I said. Of course, reader. You need but think on who shall be the subject of my trial. And we shall go from there. So do we... Hmm. Well, we can only use her, but you, you're you wondering what kind of... Trinket. Because currently she's got presence. Righteous Flame might not be a bad idea. Because she's alone. Yeah. This will give me just a little bit of extra oomph. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Because otherwise... Oh, she can cast her aura really fast. That's also useful. Well, does presence affect aura size? Hmm. No. And she can also jump. Yeah, I think Righteous Flame seems like a useful thing. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Faye. I must admit, I do sense something from that one. I once had a wild heart myself, quite like her own. We shall see if there is more to her than that. Let us bring her forth. Soon Faye arrives, in heat of the summons. The scribes! I think that if I listen carefully that I can hear them calling out to me?
so-called savages such as Fey are similar to nomads such as Hedwin in the rites. Okay. But they move in quick sudden bursts. The apparition Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, girl. The place where you reside at present is but a single has but a single rule, which is you answer to me here. Wow. Oh, okay. I will. Such naive enthusiasm. Now, be silent. It is plain to me that you have much to learn as yet about the rites. But you have learned something, and I would see you prove it, without the benefit of anyone save your reader. Um, okay. Are you out there to help me with this, mister? Whoa. Interesting. Are those... Oh. They're the little guys. And they're going to be really aggressive here. Yeah, okay. Oh, but they, only but they cost five. almost nothing. Ah. I think you're actually going to have to use her snap um, aura to, yeah. get, to get them before they take off. Because that way you'll be able yeah. to get in. Yeah, and we get, to, we get to recharge our... Oh, but they can land. Or... Er, Go aloft and then land. Good. They can. I. Oh, are those runes? Um. Damn it. Whoa. Yeah, he popped up just as. But he must have gotten popped too. Whoa, they're super fast. Yeah, and you couldn't well, jump over that. It, yeah, I was I tried. Oh, they're being nasty. So they are. Oh. Yeah, the the problem is I can't outpace them. So you're just gonna have to kill them. Damn it. Yeah, they're rough. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to actively fight them. Cause that's the only way to defeat those yeah. guys. Yeah, luckily I, I got the right upgrades for this and honestly we only have to hit them one more time. The problem is when there's multiple of them. Damn it! Uh, well, well, you I killed got that one, of them. one, but oh! Come on! You didn't spawn in in time. Yeah, well, see, I will notice the uh, my like my foes will do this where they'll. Well, oh, he's just hovering over it. Well, yeah, he was baiting me into getting the ball. Damn it! He was just trying go. to land and get his aura on you. Yeah, which is super, super dirty. I feel like uh, Tizo does not have that quick of a delay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, we're fine. Well, looks like he just had to learn how to use her aura. Yeah. Okay. How did I do? How did I do? I must admit that you did better than I expected, girl. You have passed this trial of yours. Some congratulations are in order to you and also to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. Sandra's favorite. Oh, that's probably referring to us, not Faye. Yeah. Probably. Maybe we've used the book enough. All right. Um, did I imagine all that, mister? Because I hope I didn't. Wow. What is that you have there? So we got Kaelmer's anklet for her. After Fae casts her aura, it can bounce off of objects and solid surfaces. Interesting. So, who's Kaelmer? The royal traitor's hollow band ensured the Sisters of the Arch were to carry out their mission. I don't um. know, necessarily. Unless Kaelmer is the rope collar. Which is entirely, entirely possible. Oh, right. Alright, well, let's explore the Blooming Pool. Join Sir Gilman in search of any valuables in the vicinity. Something about the lush overgrowth of Blooming Pool gives Sir Gilman a strong intuition to explore the area. Together, you set out to take a look. Blooming Pool. 
Uh, yeah, we haven't read this one yet. The southern route to the Ridge of Gold goes through a humid area pocked with hot springs. Runoff from the sandfolds means no bathing in the springs. They're just there to mock you. <laughs> Mayhaps this night could escort you, Master Reader. There seems to be nothing in particular in the vicinity, but then Sir Gilman raises his voice. Halt! This knight's keen eye has located something! The object in question is lodged deep in the ground and bears the marks of the rites. You sense that you may be able to secure its contents, but the mystic wards will not be easy to undo. Attempt to open it, so yeah, we won't be able to do other things. Mm -hmm. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, you won't be able to... Vocations. Do vocations. I'll live. So attempt to open it. You sense whatever is inside the container has benefited triumphants and the rites before. You focus all your mental faculties on the mystic wards sealing the box's contents. Soon you are left exhausted, but the box lid unfastens. Inside it is a talisman, placed there perhaps by one of your predecessors in the rites from ages past. You got a fairy spirit. After the win uh, bearer banishes an adversary, spawn a moon drop, which briefly grants infinite stamina, but only once per ten seconds. We've heard of moon drops, yeah, but we haven't really They used showed them. up really early on as like one of those little bonus events. As fairies presumably do not exist, it's likely they came to no harm in its creation. <laughs> huh. You find Jadariel seemingly deep in thought. You consider whether to even bother her. Your presence is not unwelcome, reader. Remain a moment, please. She stares at you for some time. Today marks the beginning of my 16th year in exile. You look back at her and remain silent. You sense that all she wants from you right now is for you to listen. I have kept count, put notches in this breastplate of mine for each passing day. Notice how much it has frayed. 16 years, reader. The orphans whom I fostered would be long since fully grown. Some of them are likely gone. Many of them spoke of how they longed to one day serve with me in the blood border. Sometimes, I cannot help but wonder, if I still were captain, could I have protected them? Could I have made a difference? I think not. The Commonwealth and the High Wing Remnants, they have fought eternally. Those such as I have come and gone throughout the age. I'm just looking at her horns and realizing, like, her skull would probably end here, so she's got this, like, ridiculous horn set up. Like, uh, something behind her head? Yeah. Kind of deal. But, like, also, she could never turn around, like, flip over anything in, uh, while well, sleeping. So, that's just the thing. What if she just hangs via, via horns from, like, the rafters or something? She could probably lay on her back, but the thing is, uh... I've thought about this too. I love uh, various fantasy races with horns, but depending on the way the horns are oriented, like you couldn't lay back on things, much less roll over. It's just yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I catch myself feeling pity for my years, but then, had I remained there on the blood border, it is unlikely I would have lived to see this day. She looks at you again. Do you know why they cast me down? I was a decorated captain. They said I was the best. She closes her eyes a moment before she continues. One day, it was a standard patrol, but I ran across a pack of harp fledglings, fully armed and preparing for a strike, but all on their own. They were nothing for my regiment. We ensnared them all and took them in. A considerable prize. They were not yet conditioned and could be made to talk. When the order came down that they were to be executed, I could not bring myself. Actually, I actually had never noticed the little illustrations on... I'd noticed this one frequently, but I'd never noticed like the sword. Mm -hmm. I want to see if another character speaks and we get a different illustration or if it's just her. Oh, it's possible. The Commonwealth, priding itself on mercy, 
committing such acts, though one such as me, it was unconscionable. Through one such as me. Sorry. <laughs> so I thought then, at least in my younger years, I let the damned birds go. Made no claims to, as to the contrary, and turned myself in. I was cast down the following week, sixteen years ago. Thus, my enemies had the last laugh in that exchange. If I were faced with the same choice again today, I do not know for certain that I would have chosen just the same. Now then, I shall go and mark this occasion as I've always done. Be well, reader. She heads out of the wagon, alone. Roster right. bio updated. Yep, so... Motive Insurrection. The record states she showed flagrant disrespect for the proper chain of command. Well, right, because she disobeyed orders kind of thing. Yep. As mercy guides our hand, we spare your lives, but rid ourselves of you from the sentencing ceremony. Sentencing ceremony. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, she's a Capriest. Well, that makes sense. Capricorn! Oh. Huh? Uh, so... When she was given the order to put them down, she refused, and thus was sentenced to exile. There she survived on her own and gained her horns. Many years later, she encountered Hedwin, whom she rem whom she last remembered as one of the children she had in her care. So she was actually... She was head of a regiment of, like, young orphans that were going to be trained as soldiers or something, or I don't know. Yeah. And she spared the harps, and then she was cast out, but Hedwin still Later, her. much later, was also cast down, because he was only here for a couple of years. Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, let's continue our journey. The, the Ridge, Ridge of, of Gold. Gold. One of Downside Celestial Landmarks. You are to conduct the race here against Sir Deluge. Yeah, let's... Whoa, what? Interesting. Here, in the untamed reaches of the Downside Prairie, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin, whom you liberated at the Fall of Solium. One of uh, Downside Celestial Landmarks, the temple at the highest point of the Downside exists to honor the Eight Scribes. Yeah. You learn Hedwin. Oh, look, his name is flashing. Returned safely to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed, his past transgressions all forgiven. He was the first friendly face you encountered in the Downside, and he has regained his freedom in the Liberation Rite. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the Council or... Or the blood border, which e equally is lucrative and secretive as well. However, he refused, and before the stunned council members could do anything about it, he left them. He has since made contract with Wolfred's agents, and is working together with them. Thus, the ranks of the revolution grow stronger. Per the messenger imp's custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin, word for word, and says, Keep going. I'll see you there. That's a good point. I should read that out loud. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Soon, your companions are all abuzz about it. A glorious example Hedwin sets for all of us. I always thought that Hedwin was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? Tizo is happy to hear Hedwin is, well, back in the Commonwealth. He did it. I wonder if he'll ever find the one he fell for. Yeah, that's how it's done, Hedwin. Right behind you, chum. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. Extra yeah. hope. More hope. Wish Hedwin luck. Oh, I love the shimmering of the grasses. That's a really, really nice effect that mm -hmm. I totally missed when we came through earlier. Okay, slug market. So we have two new pages Where and some stuff to buy. Hey guys, say, hey, what are y'all, uh, what are you guys doing all the way back there? You know it's not so bad here. I was thinking, I got some pretty good stuff and you ought to check it out. Okay, so we got some more, 
That's a big scoop of stardust. There's also a burning promise. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bear earns a reward up to three times of five. Oh, coins, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually rather helpful, and I could pre presumably put that on um, on somebody. So bonus damage. Nothing else is new. So let's get this scoop of stardust. Let's get the burning promise. Do you have anything to sell? Nah. Not overwhelmingly. I mean, we could sell, like, a uh, headwinds thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. All right, so let's go to the wagon. We've got some things to read. Oh, interesting. Golgothanian. The scribe's deeds. I wish to be remembered, not for boastfulness. Thus I refrain from detailing our exploits across the land, save to say that they were numerous. Know that only through our combined strength of arms and wit did we withstand this savage land. Such were the monster, monstrous dangers it posed. I came to see that all the terrors which I heard at bedside in my youth were based entirely in fact. So great were they, they blotted out the sky. Such was the evil that we vanquished, that the remnants of it yet shine under the stars. And in the end, it was the stars which guided us toward our truest calling. All right, the Ritual in the words of Luce Galorian. The serpent titan Gandroth turned to brittle stone not off long after his death. Of that you may be certain. What remains is a flat elevated basin that stands us closer to the heavens. Upon the fallen Gandroth's hide, the stars themselves alight, and you shall know that you stand on sacred ground. We set... The metal sigils lit the candle flames. We emblazoned on the rock-like forms of the sigil of our passage to and from this land. And then? And then the stars themselves, they did reply to us. They sang, shining bright, their voices loud and clear. We understood their cadence, and we knew how often to return. All right. Uh, well, battle time. Battle! Commence the right. Everything is set for the right to commence, and all is quiet amid the sweeping plains at the ridge of Gol. All there is left to do is wait for nightfall to set in. You observe Sir Gilman sliding back and forth, back and forth. You sense something is weighing on his mind. This night, this night, this night, this night is not a night at all. This night betrayed his former commander, abandoned his brethren on, of the Sea Dominion. But what is knighthood even? What? Is knighthood, if it means having to follow such a craven as Sir Deluge. Cease this nonsense, Gilman. Focus on the right, focus on the right, focus on the right. He notices you, finally. Oh, Master Reader, this knight did not see you just uh, there just now. Such was his preoccupation with the task at hand. Know that this knight stands prepared. He has no misgivings whatsoever when it comes to battling his extra avert. Please consider letting this knight participate, for he has honor to restore. Then... A glimmering within the sky draws you your atten and his attention. <laughs> I'm never ready for these. That's why I don't want to turn up the difficulty also. Because we only play this once a day, so like I'm always rusty. <laughs> Luckily we got to do the trial. We only right do one match. Yep. You exiles of the night wings. You are returned once more unto the Ridge of Gaul. Your adversaries in the rites this eve shall be the Pyre Hearts. Snuff out their pyre's flame and show your worth. Now prepare yourselves. Gilman, still not abandoned by your new friends, like your, uh, still not abandoned your new friends, like your other duties and responsibilities. Sir Deleuze wrestles with his mask for a time. This knight is most surprised that you have the courage to even show yourself. You speak of courage, Sir Deleuze, but this knight has little else to say to the likes of you. That figures, Gilman, you are no knight at all. You are a teensy minnow swimming in a sea of minnows many, many times your size. And with more honor, too. Then something comes over Sir Gilman. But just as soon as it fades, Sir Gilman slinks away. Disgraceful, you Nightwings! You are stupid to, have, to have taken that one in, and you are no good at the rights! And uh, another thing, we do not fear you! Now we shall get started. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Who are we going to choose against these guys? Okay, so first and foremost, this is a talisman. Can it be ranked up? No, it cannot be ranked up. Well, we're going to do that. You're going to try to use him to get money from his fellows? Yeah, he's he's really fast. Okay. So he's a perfect candidate for getting in. Um, let's see. So I'm probably going to go Jadariel, just so I can bully people, especially because they take longer to return. Uh, and we can bully them for money. Okay. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the Pyro Arts for a second. What do they got? I mean... If the bear is banished, an ensuing blast can banish adversaries in a radius. Of 375? But what is that? Yeah, I don't know. It so in other say. words, we might have to fight them at range. Yeah, that was kind of the expectation. So these guys are... Holy shit, this one's fast. So that guy just has a quickness, but the other two can... Well... The other two have the scroll. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Let's go, Jadariel. Let's go. I'm leaning Tizo because he can fly over their trails. Yeah, he well, can. You want Sir Gilman because he requested to be in this match, yes. right? So the other thing is, let's make this ridiculous. <laughs> okay, Hobe's wing. Yep. And then Burning Promise. Okay, so we'll do Jodariel, Gilman, Sir Gilman, and Tizo. Tizo. Very well. Screeho! Tizo is prepared to defend the honor of Sir Gilman against his ex -traverate. Come then, Nightwings! Show this knight how you defend the honor of that miserable minnow whom you harbor and guard! Okay, so yeah, this could be. This could be dicey. Rough. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Commence. She was blasted. Oh, Tizo got taken out. Whoa! Yeah, so they explode hard. Now take it. And they missed. Oh. Oh, it's too bad you couldn't get him there. She was she was taken out. And Gilman's out of the it's match. It's okay. One you exploded. Yeah. The orb is up. Suck it. <laughs> Suck it. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, he batted you? Oh, I suppose they can't attack flying opponents. Yeah, look at them. They're batting you. Did you blast them? Yeah. Close call okay, that one must have had the quickness orb as opposed to. Ah, uh, they. It's okay. They're really good at batting. They're getting better at it. Okay, they exploded, but they didn't take her out in yeah. the process. So good. Get good. someone over there. That's fast. Nope, nope. Oh, you're still... Farming. Farming. Avenging aid. A bit of a Vengeful oh. vow. Yeah, this Is that sucks. one fast enough? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, that vengeful vow makes this harder. Didn't see it coming. <laughs> I'm not really sure what they're doing. I think they're just kind of waiting for me. Yeah, camping camping them to take them out for your gold is pretty good. Yeah. But instead of using my aura here. I, I know uh making money is kind of like risky, but we have yet to lose. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for me. Oh, oh, he passed, and he, he just didn't, passed and yeah, I didn't even in. notice the ball go flying. I, I That's think okay. you need to stop with the whole money. No, we'll be fine. I mean, can't you use Bounty Gilman to get money at this point? I can. 
Because all he needs to do is land inside their pyre, right? Fly! Suck it! There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we gotta score some points with Sir Gilman, but that's fine. Both pyres now burn with the same strength. Yep. Yep. He was taken out by that one. Uh, yeah. It's, uh... And we don't have any way to regain our, um, HP points. Nope, we don't. As nice as it would be to f keep flying, I mean, that, that helped. Yeah. But they're really good at jumping up and batting at you. Like, volleyball or something. Oh. Thank goodness that Jodariel happened to be standing there and he didn't jump in. You know? <gasps> Got it. Oh, man. Just barely. It was super close. Another most inglorious defeat is imminent. This knight can feel it in his bone! Oh! He batted you. Oh. Good. Oh, Tizo! Happened to banish that guy, but now there's three of them? Shucks. It's okay. Oh, you're just passing to Tizo. Go, Tizo! Suck it! There we go. Okay. Two more times. Unless you get Jadariel in, which would be insane. Ah, oh, right at the end. Yeah. Oh, no one's guarding. Yeah. I, I almost feel like I should have just waited until Tizo came back. Positively brutish. So the nice part is, uh, Tizo's, like, like, uh, quick little, like, hop move yeah. is, uh, crazy fast. Aha! Oh, uh, the last moment. Oh, good, he couldn't leap in. Yeah, the one fear is they have Vengeful Vow or whatever it is. Whoa. He missed. Oh! Damn it! The problem is his turn radius isn't that good, is it? Nope. His turn radius is, um... Atrocious. Oh, Damn it! That's yeah. why you can't just do, like, a quick little... No, I can't. It's okay, we'll win. Uh, because... They have to hit me twice more. Ah, uh, they banished her. It's okay. Go, Tizo! There's no way they're going to be able to stop Tizo if they're on the lower side. Yeah, That's I like close. Jodariel, but she's really bad against quick opponents. Whew. Still, we made a uh, decent amount of money from that. Curse you, Gilbin! You were a fool to abandon us, and now you only twist the dagger at our backs! You stupid! Still do not understand, Sir Deluge. This knight is no longer beholden to the likes of you. This knight is bound only by the path towards enlightenment. Your words ring false. You are unfit to lead. Shut up! You know exactly what you are, Gilman. You call this knight a craven, yet your courage is a mere facade. And everyone knows, everyone knows, this knight shall see to it. <laughs> Sir Gilman does not respond, although you sense the words of Sir Deluge got to him. Why am I the... Why do I always have to play the characters that are actually yelling at each other for, the whole time? <laughs> yeah, I should probably play some of the other characters. Well, that's okay. Oh boy. M. That was... That was intense. Yeah, it was. Well... They got fast. Back at the wagon after besting the pyre hearts in spite of almost having lost, you are able to recover for a time, though you have another task this night. Time again to see where the rites shall take you next, by searching for the answer in the waning starlight. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths forward. 
You gaze right. into the darkness of the night. So I could do this, but we're immediately going to get drawn into a bunch of dialogue. This game does not have good stopping points after battle. So we will actually see you guys in the next episode of, uh, of Pyre. And as always, thanks for watching. And yay, the audio should work this time. <laughs> the microphone's turned around the right way. Yeah.